All right, welcome back everybody. So I finished duplicating as many fronds as I felt I needed and you can see here that the head is completely covered. There are several objects, I believe there are four objects, and uh, each of them has its own particular uh, uh, coverage area. And this is a good way to do feathered hair, although there are better ways to do other kinds of hair. If we go back over into Unity, I've created a hair texture and I've slapped it on. I got the hair texture by downloading a, a hair texture by someone named Draconian Rain. He says it's free to upload for non-commercial works, so uh, I can trend, I can give it all to you folks. The hair texture is actually pretty decent, but the actual hair is not, as you can see. There are a few details which make this hair not very suitable for the, th the kinds of things we would like to do. Uh, the biggest one is that when you look at it from various angles you get very different appearances. So if I were to go back into the sun here um, we are applying hard shadows but the hair is not receiving them. So if I were to go into the hero here and take a look for there are all the planes that we're seeing and it says that they're supposed to cast and receive shadows but as you can see there are no shadows being cast on the head below. That's a serious problem with Unity's uh, shadow caster and I think that better shadows are coming down the line pretty soon here but at the moment they don't exist. Uh, if we were to change this bias from 0.36 all the way down we can start to get some idea that there might be shadows involved but they're still really not doing the job. Uh, and the other problem is that uh, the hair itself doesn't have the right amount of stability to it. As you can see as we move around pieces of it turn invisible. Now if you are doing manly men short hair, that's not a huge deal because what you do is you just put in thousands and thousands of simple stuff. Uh, if you're doing hair, hair like this, it's a pretty big deal. You get these stupid floating pieces. So what I generally do to try and both fill out the hair and make it look better is first off I'm going to save it in a new file and then I'm going to combine all of these hair pieces into a single one using, is it J or Control J? Control J and I've now got this giant mess of hair. And what I'll do is I will duplicate this giant mess of hair and then I'm actually going to scale it up. And then I'm going to go into the hair and I'm going to just rotate or flip all of the normals. Uh, and then I'm going to combine that with the other hair. There you go. So now I just have the same hair except for I've got all of it both faces are showing on every frond and there's a slight displacement between the faces. Now the now you might have thought well you should have you know maybe use solidify or scale down or something. Scaling up actually gives it a little bit more apparent body uh, and I think it works a little bit better. So this is still An Hero 2. Let's go ahead and delete as soon as An Hero 3 finishes. Grind, 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 grind. There we are. Get rid of you bring in you. So we're back to having the um, we're back to having the white hair texture. Let's go ahead and apply our hair frond texture here and that gives us the transparency we need and it's a little bit less awful. Uh, I wouldn't say that this hair is excellent, but for hair that you can throw together in an hour, this is actually pretty decent. Um, and I would like to thank Draconian Rain for his hair texture because it actually turned out to be quite nice. Uh, one of the things I can do to improve this hair quite a lot is I can go in and try very hard to massage these sharp edges uh, and, and try and smooth them out. Um, if I were to go back into Blender, you can see that the hair is currently being uh, treated pretty roughly in terms of uh, it being sharply shaded and stuff. If I hit smooth shading, unfortunately I don't believe that carries back over into Blender. Grind, 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 grind. No, the way that Blender handles uh, uh, smoothness is, is very different. So if I wanted to get this to work uh, more smoothly, I would have to actually add in more cuts and do some more work. And I don't really feel like doing that. For now, this hair is fine. It's perfectly suitable. I'm going to upload both of these hair tutorials at the same time so that you can build your own hair 
uh, without having to go through two two tutorials on two different days. Uh, it's really just first half and last half because there's about 45 minutes of putting more copies of that thing into the hair. Now this is how you do feathered hair. There are other options for other kinds of hair. And if I look at this hair, it doesn't look very good from the top because our little pumpkin, uh, sorry, our little pumpkin, our little um, explosion of, of hair on the top doesn't come forward quite enough. This is where you can go back into Blender and start to massage it using the uh, sculpt mode. There are a lot of better ways to do this and uh, if you were thinking yeah this is all your fault if you were thinking now if we were thinking we would have done this earlier on but you can use the grab brush to adjust these and I really do recommend doing this before you do the duplication since it can be a little bit finicky about grabbing both verts uh, of some duplicated fronds so um, it's up to you when you do this but adjusting it like this is a pretty easy way to give it... Oops, oh, I got the wrong thing there. Oh, that's disturbing. Doing it like this is a pretty easy way to add uh, a little bit more refinement to the hair, make it seem a little bit nicer. Pop through is not great, so in general you want to try and avoid pop through if you can. Um, but I think that I'm not going to bother there. So we're also going to bring forward these. Oop. and I think that'll do fine. So if we save this and we go back into Unity, we're gonna see this uh, look a little bit better because we adjusted it using our grab brush. And the grab brush uh, as well as the inflate brush and the smooth brush are really invaluable if you're trying to do a good job on your hair. Um, we aren't. <laughs> to put it quite bluntly, this is uh, mediocre at best hair, but it will serve fine for our placeholder avatar and it is kind of a gateway hair. From here you can learn a lot more about creating hair. And in the next episode we are going to move on to clothes, so I hope you're going to look forward to that. Oh, by the way, the material I'm using is... Uh, uh, that's not it. It's called hair frond. The material I'm using is a transparent bumped specular map with the color turned to a dark red and if you adjust the color, you can get all sorts of different shapes and sizes out of it. It's up to you how you want to play that. Uh, the normal maps are a little bit screwy for this hair because of the, um, the way that we've got the faces set up, but I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, and I mean the normal maps in terms of the normals of the mesh, not this normal map object. Uh, Alright, well, that's it. And uh, see you next episode where we'll work on hair. I mean, not clothes. We just finished hair. We don't want to do that again.